So this is our grade stabilization structure. So as I was talking about before, um, you have gully erosion in the field, but you also very frequently have gully erosion where the field stops and a hedgerow or a woodland starts. So you have a head cutting gully out of the woods up towards the field. Because of that, you know, at the end of a grass waterway, we typically put some type of rock structure. In this case, it's a grade stabilization structure so that the water can uh, cross over the site at a slightly steeper slope and not cause head cutting in the gully at the base of the waterway. We don't want the waterway to continue to encroach up into the field through the grass waterway. So we put this structure here to kind of anchor the bottom of the grass waterway so the water cannot cut a gully further up. So here we used um, like class one uh, stone, um, it was designed to handle the flows that come off the waterway, and uh, so this basically healed, helped heal that gully at the base. It's little blackberries. <laughs> and it slows the water. It, this doesn't really slow the water much. It actually conveys it further down. It prevents the water from scouring the waterway and gully. It doesn't, this doesn't slow the water so much. It does spread the water out some. So it, it helps dissipate the velocity because of the roughness of the actual rock. It's a little bit turbulent as it goes through. So that slows it from flowing so quickly down the slope, but it still conveys the water safely down slope to a place that's not eroding. That's, that's the idea of it. Okay. It keeps the water from scouring a gully further back up the grass waterway. So it, the name says it all. It's, it's a stabilization structure. stabilizes the grade. And um, we have the, the forest buffers. They're so far advanced now that you can hardly tell they were never here, but there were sloping areas that came off of the hills all the way around this peninsula. And the previous owner installed those practices and we've maintained them. So they were installed sometime around 2003. Okay. So going on 20 years, you see the 20 year growth, and it's hard to tell they were ever planted, but they are. There are places in there you can find rows of trees where the trees did actually, in fact, the bushes and the red oaks are there. Uh, but also we've had natural succession come in and fill in the gaps for the most part. So we're, we're actually, the plan is, is to maintain uh, the forest buffers as they are. This one section here behind us, the forest buffer, is actually planned to maintain it as early successional habitat. So certain uh, songbirds like that habitat. So for this area of the forest buffer, we're going to actually prevent it from getting too large. Uh, the rest of the forest buffer is going to be managed for someday for timber, you know, down the road, uh, you know, 40, 50 years. There'll be some timber value there. What is the typical time frame for installing practices like these? Okay. So when we talk about time frame for practice installation, generally speaking, if, you, if you're in need of a conservation plan or water conservation plan, you're looking at about six months time you call a district you have a plan in hand. The, the, depending on how complicated the practice is, uh, depends on how long it'll take generally to get the practice. We have um, generally work under first come first serve in our workload. We have, we're, we're more or less fully staffed now our workload. Um, so if you have a, a six month planning process, you're looking at a nine month technical design process. So from the time you walk in the door to the time you walk out a little over a year, you can start installing practices on your farm or structure. Now agronomic practices, the only limit there is is your limit uh, the equipment you have, the access to resources that you have. Um, our, we have many agronomic practices that are installed yearly, including cover crops. That cover crop is planted year after year, um, and the no-till is is year after year as well because the equipment is a one-time purchase, and then that implement is used over and over again. So we have yearly yearly carried out practices or installed practices, and we have practices that have longer lifespans, such as the forest buffers, which are essentially um, wherever is the wrong word to use, but essentially the forest buffers are there permanently. Is there funding available? Um, we often have a, people have a misconception. They come to us looking for grant money, and that's not the way to, to properly think about conservation planning. You really need that, that resource assessment up front, on the front end. You need that conversation with the conservation planner to really figure out, so the planner can figure out what your goals are, and the, and the planner can also figure out what resource concerns your property has. So sometimes we go to farms that don't have very many resource concerns. There's not really any need for, for major practices or structural practices. Uh, the opposite is also true. We sometimes go to farms and we find gullies everywhere. And um, typically we do assist farmers 
uh, that are interested in trying to apply for conservation grants for some of the structural practices. But that's that's really a second step after the conservation planning process is completed. We document the resource needs, the resource concerns, and the needed practices in the conservation plan, and then we help um, the cooperator uh, look for financial assistance. There's multiple programs out there with multiple acronyms. Uh, the important thing to remember is, is that typically there's both federal and state funding uh, for structural conservation practices if they're needed.